Overtime! Hey guys, Charlie here for this episode of Overtime Arcade. We're going to do kind of a quick video on a topic that I've been getting lots of questions about lately, which is this. Uh, this is something that you've, you've probably seen in a couple of recent episodes. And what this is, is a monitor test bench isolation transformer power supply. So basically what this does is it provides the type of power that you need to power a, an arcade monitor, a CRT monitor, without having to drag over an entire cabin at any time you're working on a monitor or want to test one out, that sort of thing. You know, virtually all arcade monitors, especially from the golden age, you know, the, the sort of early 80s that I tend to focus on, require an isolation transformer to power the monitor. You can't just hook it up directly to a power supply. You can't just hook it up directly to, you know, main you know, power coming from the wall. It has to go through an isolation transformer for safety reasons. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll blow the bridge rectifier and, and other, you know, lots of other bad things will happen. Uh, and so typically what, what I've done in the past and what lots of other people do is you, you end up dragging an entire, you know, cabinet over in order to tap into the isolation transformer, typically in the, the bottom of the cabinet, sort of in that suitcase brick sort of set up at the bottom. Um, but that can be, you know, inconvenient, especially if you're working on lots of monitors on the test bench or whatever, you know, having something that's sm small, compact, portable, lightweight uh, to power uh, monitors when you're testing them or working on them or that sort of thing, whether it's at home or you're, you're going to a repair party at a, at a friend's place, you know, having something like this is nice and convenient. Um, and so I built one. Uh, I made one myself. Uh, it does have, as you can see, an isolation transformer inside. It has a little socket here for plugging in like a, a computer power cord that then goes into the wall. It's got a little rocker switch here that's illuminated. So there's a red light that turns on to tell you that the, the unit is powered up. Uh, there's a fuse here for safety. Uh, there's a little Molex connector here for plugging in. Basically, I've made a couple different types of uh, adapters for connecting this to, you know, different types of, of uh, monitor plugs. You know, there's a, a few different types of power input connectors that different monitors use. And uh, yeah, that's um, basically what we've got here. So uh, this is a, de is a design that, you know, was really inspired or informed by one that Bob Roberts uh, uh, created many, many years ago. Uh, also, I took some, some inspiration from uh, another Bob, Lilypad19 on the Claw forums. He was in a thread recently talking about one that he made uh, himself that somebody was asking about. So I got some ideas from him. And also I got some input from Liam from Retrobotics on YouTube. Uh, he's built one like this and I got some, uh, some, some tips and tricks uh, from him for building this. And uh, yeah, so I've been using this in a few different videos and people have been asking me about it. They wanted to build one themselves and wanted to know, you know, what parts and everything I use. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. Also, my buddy Mark, you know, he saw me using this. I brought this to his house, you know, a couple weeks ago. And uh, he's like, hey, can you build me one? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna build one together. I'm gonna show you all the parts that you need, all the tools that you're gonna wanna use, you know, all the steps that it takes. And also down in the video description, you're gonna find links to all of these, these parts and everything. So if you wanna build one for yourself, you know, you'll have all the information you need uh, to do that. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's first go through all the parts you're going to need to build one of these. And the first thing is some sort of enclosure. Uh, this is a, a junction box. I like that it has a transparent cover. I can sort of see what's going on inside. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, this one is seven by five by three inches, which is a good size uh, uh, for that. So you're gonna want a enclosure of some sort. It doesn't have to be exactly like that, but that's the one that I like. Uh, the next thing, and then we're sort of working from the power, uh, you know, from one end of the, the, the sort of setup to the other. The next thing you're going to want is a, a panel mount IEC power socket. Uh, I like this one that has a built-in inline uh, EMI line filter. So you would plug in like a computer power cord uh, into this, and this is like mounted on the, the panel of the enclosure, and then it immediately goes through this line filter. So that's good. Um, obviously, you're going to need a power cord. And if you're like me, you've probably got a bunch of these actually lying around your house in like a junk drawer or you know, some sort of, uh, I've got a big box all of like old cabling and, uh, you know, any sort of like, you know, old sort of computer or printer 
uh, power cord uh, should be perfectly fine for something like this. Um, we're going to need that switch that I talked about earlier. This is a panel mount illuminated rocker switch. Um, so uh, I like it. It's small and, and you know cheap. And uh, we're going to need that fuse holder that you saw earlier. This is also a panel mount uh, fuse holder. So we'll drill a hole into the, uh, the side of the uh, enclosure, the junction box, and we'll mount this. Uh, you're going to want a fuse, obviously. Uh, I've got uh, some 3 amp, 250 volt slow blow uh, fuses. This is often what you'll find uh, used in um, the, uh, the, the power supply or isolation transformer power supply set up in most classic machines. So I figured this was a good rating to use. What's next? Uh, obviously, you're going to need an isolation transformer. Uh, I like the ones that uh, Peter from Arcade Parts and Repair sells. This is a 120 volt isolation transformer, which is the sort of standard for most, especially American built uh, classic arcade machines. You know, most Atari and Williams, Bally Midway, etc. Uh, there, the monitors that they had in those cabinets used 120 volt isolation transformers. Now, if you're working with Nintendo cabinets in particular, and some other Japanese monitors, those used 100 volts, because 100 volts is the standard in Japan, so you would need a 100 volt isolation transformer, which Peter also sells, but there would be a, a few differences for a Nintendo uh, setup for this, uh, including especially the, the, the plugs are different, the, the power plugs are different, um, so we're building one that's designed for a 120 volt isolation transformer. Today, uh, you're going to need a couple of uh, ring terminals uh, that look like this. You'll see what these are used for in a little bit. Two of them are good, and a little bit of fuzz here. And uh, uh, M5 is sort of a good size uh, if you're looking for the size uh, for that. Uh, you're gonna need some wire. Um, you know, some I like uh, 18 gauge wire for this task. Probably uh, black, uh, green, and white, uh, sort of the, the classic colors for you know, live, neutral, and ground uh, wiring. Uh, a couple of feet each at, a, at minimum, probably two feet each at absolute minimum. Uh, probably a few more feet actually to have a, a longer sort of power cable to connect uh, to your monitor. Uh, we're going to need some Molex pins. So you're going to need some uh, male and female 0 0.084 inch Molex pins. Um, that's what we've got here, at least three of each, uh, probably more if you're like me and you screw up some of your crimps. So we've got those pins and those are 0 0.084 Molex, both male and female. We're going to need some connectors. Uh, this is the one that will mount onto uh, the cabinet, sort of being the, or, um, the enclosure, the junction box. This is sort of the output power, you know, coming out of the isolation transformer. Uh, and this is a Molex 0 0.084 three pin female connector receptacle. And this actually is a panel mount. So this will go right on the side of the enclosure. And then to mate with that, we have a 0 0.084 Molex three pin male connector plug. And so this is going to be uh, connected to the, the sort of adapter that we put together and it will plug into the um, enclosure like that, snap together like that. Let's see, what else do we need? Oh. So for the other end, and once we put together the wiring that it will actually go uh, to, the, uh, to the monitor itself, uh, it's a slightly different size Molex. So you're going to want some uh, Molex 0 0.093 uh, female pins. So you're going to need at least two of those. So I've got a strip of them here. And you're going to need a Molex 0 0.093 two pin male connector plug. And this will actually go uh, into the the uh, the power connector coming off of the monitor. So this is where the, mo the the power will go into the monitor. Now, the other thing you're gonna want for that is uh, an alligator clip uh, for the ground, because you do want to have this monitor grounded. You don't want it just sort of uh, floating on an island in, in isolation. It does need to be grounded. Don't let that confuse you with the whole isolation transformer. It is important to still have your monitor grounded, especially in a test bench when you've got your hands around it. Uh, touching it, you don't want to get shocked. Now, we're going to be setting up this adapter for kind of the, the most common types of uh, monitor power plugs that you'll encounter, G07, 4900, K7000, that sort of thing, that typically have uh, you know, the, the two, a, a two pin plug for the AC power going into, the isolated AC power going into the monitor. Uh, and then there's a separate uh, a ground connection that we'll just use this alligator cl clip for. Now you will find some other monitors have like a three plug or a three pin uh, connector uh, where the, the ground is actually delivered in the plug. So uh, we won't cover that today, but you'll see how easy it would be to create 
a setup like that if that's what you were trying to do. So um, some last couple of things that we're gonna need are some hardware, uh, some nuts and bolts, and I got these from uh, your, you know, my local Ace Hardware. You can get them from almost uh, anywhere. Uh, first thing you're gonna want are five of these little uh, Keps nuts, and so these are uh, nuts that kind of have a built-in uh, washer that's uh, free spinning. These are called Keps nuts. If you're not familiar with that, you're gonna want five of these, and I think the right size is a 1032. So you're gonna want five of these 1032 Keps nuts. Uh, you're going to want three half-inch bolts uh, to go with that. Um, these are uh, also 1032 uh, uh, bolts, uh, half-inch long. You're gonna want three of these, and you're gonna want one of them uh, that's three quarters uh, inch long. And you'll see why we're doing that. This is actually gonna be a post that we mount our ground connection on. So uh, five of these 1032 Keps nuts, uh, three of these half inch 1032 uh, bolts. So these are gonna be our short bolts. We're gonna want one three quarter inch 1032. That's gonna be our long bolt. And this is what we're going to use to mount the uh, isolation transformer into the, uh, the junction box, into the enclosure. Uh, and then there's a couple more uh, nuts and bolts that we need. Uh, these are actually going to really mount the, uh, the power uh, socket uh, onto the side of the, uh, of the enclosure. And uh, the first thing you're gonna want are um, two 632 nylon insert lock nuts. So these are teeny tiny little uh, nuts with a nylon insert. So you're gonna want two of those uh, 632 size and then two half inch 632 um, little, little tiny little uh, uh, bolts there. And again, these are gonna hold the, uh, the power socket uh, with the built-in EMI filter onto the side of the enclosure. So those are all the parts that we're going to use. And uh, there's a, a couple of tools we're gonna want. So you're gonna need a screwdriver of some sort. You know, I really like this small USB uh, charge, rechargeable uh, power uh, screwdriver. You're going to want a soldering iron, and I've got my soldering iron ready to go over here. I guess in theory you could use sort of like quick connects, you know, type of uh, instead of soldering, but I do prefer soldering myself. Uh, we're going to want uh, solder, so I've got my spool of solder ready to go here. I like having a nice solder mat, and actually this is a new solder mat for me. Uh, I left my, uh, uh, I brought mine to Mark's house a week or two ago and left it there. Um, I'll get it back at some point, but I was meaning to get a larger one anyway, so I've got a nice big new uh, soldering mat. Uh, you're going to want a power drill, so I've got my sort of you know cordless cheap Ryobi power drill here. You're also going to want uh, uh, a step drill bit, and I've got a set of uh, step drill bits here, and I also have this little sort of centering punch uh, that you'll see me use. So these, these step drill bits are kind of important for drilling into the side uh, of the enclosure and having a nice clean uh, cut. Uh, what else you're going to want? A wire stripper. I've got my automatic uh, wire stripper right here. You're going to want a uh, crimping tool uh, for crimping those Molex uh, pins. And I've got my you know, ratcheting uh, crimping, crimping tool right here. And actually, uh, I don't think I brought it downstairs. Uh, you're going to probably want a, a, a normal sort of uh, a traditional regular crimper and uh, I'll show that when I go grab that in a few minutes, but um, that's good for doing the, um, uh, the alligator uh, clip and the uh, ring terminals. Um, also optional, but probably useful, is a set of helping hands to hold things in place while you're soldering, uh, unless you have three hands, I don't, and some side cutters uh, will likely be helpful for uh, trimming things up. And so, uh, those are all the parts you're going to, uh, or parts and tools you're going to want to use. You probably will also want to have your multimeter ready to go just to, you know, uh, test continuity to double check your, your soldering work. And at the end, uh, I've got a monitor to hook this up to along with a, a test pattern generator, uh, CraftyMix uh, TPG, just so that we can actually see that this whole thing is working. Um, so with that, why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is drill some holes into the junction box so that we can mount uh, our various uh, components uh, into it. So, uh, and for that, we're, we're mostly going to be using this uh, step drill bit on my power drill. This allows you, it's sort of got this almost, you know, step pyramid type of configuration. So instead of drilling the, the sort of full diameter of the hole all at once, you kind of do it step by step by step 
gradually increasing the uh, diameter of the hole to accommodate the part that you're trying to mount. Uh, I've marked the uh, junction box with the um, various spots that I want to drill these initial holes. So on one end, I've got it dead center in the middle. That's where we're going to mount the uh, power socket, the input socket. On the other end, I've done the exact same thing, marked it right in the middle. That's where the output power plug, the Molex, is going to go. And on this side, I've got it marked for the uh, switch, the rocker switch, and the uh, fuse. Um, so yeah, uh, just so, you know, like this, um, with the top off, uh, the, the height of this enclosure is really two inches. So the midpoint uh, vertically is at one inch. Uh, so all of these are at one inch. And just to accommodate the sort of position of things, uh, you can see that I have the center of the hole for the rocker switch at uh, one and three quarters right there from the left side. And then from the right side for the uh, fuse, I've got that at about one and a quarter, if you can see that right there. So uh, in order to help uh, make sure that our, our drill bit doesn't move around, I've got this handy dandy sort of uh, punch right here that I'll line up right on, actually you can't even see what I'm doing if I do it like that. Uh, <laughs> so it's lined up right on that mark and I can just push it in and you hear that click and it's, you might not even be able to see it. it's made this sort of tiny little indentation uh, that I can use to kind of set my drill bit. And I'm gonna do that on all of these other sort of marks. Whoops. There we go. And we'll do it over here. And one more over here. And that keeps our, uh, you'll see our drill bit from sliding around when we want to uh, get it going. So again, we have this step drill bit here. And if you can see, it's got all these different sort of sizes. So we start from, what is that, 3 16 And we can go all the way to 7 8 but we don't want to go all the way to 7 8 We're going to stop at 3 quarters of an inch uh, for that because that's the size that we want to drill for this uh, rocker switch. So again, this is sort of a weird angle to do on camera. I'm gonna line up the drill bit there, get my hands out of the way, uh, hopefully, and you'll sort of see how this works. Right, makes a huge mess. <laughs> so maybe you want a vacuum cleaner to clean up afterwards. And uh, we can double check sort of where we are. I don't think we're quite there. I need to go maybe uh, one more step through to get it to three quarters of an inch. You can always you can always take more off. You can always make the the, the diameter of the hole wider. You can never add it back. So we'll do that here. All right, so I think that's good. And we can see that we have drilled uh, a three quarters of an inch hole. And we don't actually want to insert it yet, uh, but we can sort of see that uh, it does look like the uh, hole is maybe not quite wide enough. Or in fact, oh, I remember, there's a little notch right here at the top. Uh, and I actually like to cut that off. Uh, it would, in some application, be used to sort of align the switch so there's no chance of it uh, twisting. Um, but I'm not super worried about that. I don't want to go through that extra step. And I can see that we can start to get the, actually maybe I need to, uh, there's not quite even all the way around. All right, I think that's a little bit better. And I'm just dry fitting it right now uh, to make sure that it will eventually go in all the way. Maybe it needs a little bit more. Again, you can always you can always add, or you can always make the hole larger. You can't make it smaller. So there, I don't want to push it in all the way, and man, I've made a mess. Uh, but you can see how we've dry fit uh, the switch into that hole, but we don't want to mount it uh, just yet. So 
I'm gonna go and uh, drill the others real quick. This one's gonna be just as easy again, because it is a, uh, a, a very, you know, sort of just a round hole that we need uh, for the uh, fuse holder. What gets interesting is it's a bit more complicated for the power socket because uh, that's not a circle, that's like a rounded rectangle. So uh, it's kind of a, <laughs> I haven't exactly figured out how to get it absolutely perfect, uh, but I'll sort of work the, um, uh, the step drill kind of back and forth and kind of trace the, the size that I want in pencil and kind of, uh, uh, you know, test over and over and over again you know, gradually making the hole uh, larger. And the same thing on uh, this side with the, the Molex. Uh, again, it's sort of a, a rectangle shape. And in fact, no matter what, there will be a little bit of gap around the, uh, the Molex connector. So yeah, let me go and drill the rest of these holes out and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right, we've got all the holes drilled in the enclosure in the junction box and it's not quite perfect, but I think it's uh, going to work just fine. So on the sort of front side uh, of the enclosure, we've got the, the holes drilled for the uh, power switch and for the fuse. On one end, we have the hole drilled out for the uh, power socket uh, with the line filter. And on the other end, we've got the hole drilled out for the Molex plug. Uh, and yeah, it's not perfect, but uh, it'll, it should work just fine. One thing I forgot to add is uh, you do need some uh, drill bits, some standard size drill bits. Uh, for some of the, the screws or bolts that we're going to mount. So uh, we had to drill two holes here with a 1 8 drill bit for the, the bolts that hold the uh, power socket in place. And we had to drill some holes in the bottom. These are 3 16 of an inch uh, for the bolts that are going to hold the um, isolation transformer to the enclosure. So now we can go ahead and actually start assembling this. Uh, and I kind of like to work sort of in order through the circuit. And we'll start by inserting the power socket with the built-in um, EMI uh, filter, line filter, and it sort of clicks right there into place, but we are going to secure it with our little teeny tiny uh, nuts and bolts. All right, that's nice and secure. So there is our um, power connector mounted onto the side of the cabinet. Uh, and basically power comes in from the wall through that power cord, you know, the IEC socket right there, goes through immediately through this line filter. Um, and it's then going to go to our fuse holder. So we're gonna line up and mount our fuse holder right here. All right, that seems kind of snug. And one of the things we want to do is bend up this terminal a, a little bit. This is for one end of the, the connection here. So we'll bend that up. You couldn't have done it uh, ahead of time because then the, the sort of um, the fuse wouldn't, the fuse holder wouldn't mount in place. So we'll bend it up now so that we can make that connection. Um, and so basically we're going to take the, uh, the live, um, the hot uh, uh, line coming from the power and we're going to take that uh, over here to the one of the the leads of the fuse holder and then we're going to come back from the other end of the fuse over to the power switch so the first thing that happens is uh, the power goes immediately to the fuse all right so i've cut a length of black wire to size and now i'm just going to solder it from the uh, the hot uh, lead of the uh, power uh, socket uh, to one of the ends of the fuse holder. And with that solder connection being made, we can pop in our power switch. Here we go. And uh, that looks straight enough. And now we've got to make a connection from the other end of the fuse holder to one of the ends of the uh, power switch. And with those solder connections made, we can actually go ahead and insert a fuse into the fuse holder. Pop that in like this, and this kind actually screws on. And all the way in there, there we go. And now we should be able to test for continuity from where the power will be coming in here from the socket through the filter, uh, through the fuse with continuity there, and all the way to the 
uh, end of the uh, power switch there. So we've got our multimeter on continuity test. We'll test from here to here. That's good. That's good. And that's good. So we've got good continuity going through all of those uh, solder joints. Okay, with that done and tested, the next thing we need to do is make our first ground connection. And this is actually what's going to link the uh, power socket, the ground lug on the power socket, uh, to one of the, the bolts holding the uh, isolation transformer to the enclosure. So I've got just a small piece of green wire. I've stripped both ends. One of them is going to get soldered directly to the neutral lug on the, uh, the socket filter thing here. And the other one is going to get a ring terminal because that's how we're going to mount it uh, to one of the bolts on the isolation transformer. All right, the next connection we need to make will go from the neutral lug on the power socket slash filter uh, to the distant end of the uh, uh, power switch. And really all this is going to do is provide us with the AC power that we need to illuminate the LED to indicate that the, <laughs> that the, that the, the unit is on. I'm really only going to make the connection on the, uh, the, the, the rocker switch for now because we'll have to make a more complicated connection over here on the, uh, the neutral lug on the power socket. I'll show you that in a second. So yeah, I'm just for now just going to solder this little small piece of white wire one end uh, to the switch. Okay, and with that connection made, things are start, gonna start to get a little bit more complicated. I have temporarily mounted the isolation transformer into the junction box with just two of the bolts in place. Uh, basically what we need to do is take one of the red leads uh, from the isolation transformer, which as indicated here are the input lines, connect that to the other end of the uh, the other lug on the switch down here, and then the other red uh, line uh, going into the isolation transformer is going to connect uh, to the neutral on the, uh, the power socket slash filter, as is the uh, neutral line going to the, uh, the, the switch. So these two wires are going to be soldered to this lug, and this red wire is going to be soldered to that one. With those solder connections made, we should be done soldering, although we've got plenty of work left to do. We've got a bunch of crimping left to do, but we can go ahead and test some more of these connections. So we should have a connection between the neutral line going to the uh, switch and the neutral coming off of the, the power socket, and we do. We should also have continuity from the hot lug of the socket slash filter all the way to the power switch, just like we do before, all right? And uh, also to the, the one that will, the lug that connects to the isolation transformer. We don't just yet because I haven't thrown the switch, but once I turn the switch on, we do have continuity all the way through going into the isolation transformer. So going from the socket through the filter, through the fuse, through the switch, and we have continuity when the switch is on and we lose it when the switch is off, which is great. And again, we have uh, the solder connection on the, uh, from the isolation transformer to the neutral lug on the socket slash filter. So that's all looking good. Uh, and like I said, we need to start crimping. So uh, the yellow lines that come off of the isolation transformer, as indicated here, these are the output. So this is the isolated uh, 120 volts of, of AC coming out. That's what needs to go into the Molex and eventually into our monitor. So I'm going to grab some, I'm looking for male, uh, those are female, I'm looking for male 0.084 Molex pins. All right, so I've grabbed three male 0.84 Molex pins and two of them I'm going to crimp onto the yellow output leads uh, coming off of the uh, transformer. And these will go on to our, where is it? Our uh, output mo uh, Molex connector. This is our, the male pins go into the female um, connector and then eventually the female pins will go into the male connector. And the polarity really doesn't matter here. So we can just slide these pins into place 
until it clicks. So that's good. And like I was saying, you know, um, AC does have a, a hot and a neutral and, and basically, um, you know, at some point uh, upstream, the neutral is actually tied to ground. Uh, with an isolation transformer, you are severing that connection. So, uh, you know, one of these is hot and one of these is neutral, but it doesn't really matter because neutral is not tied to ground. So that's basically good to go uh, for that. The other mail pin, which is right here, actually needs to be crimped onto a ground wire. So this is going to be our ground wire that goes into the, the middle connection here. So I'm going to cut a length of uh, green wire. I'm going to crimp on a male Molex pin 0 .0 0.084. Uh, we'll plug that into this end of the uh, connector. And on the other end of that um, green wire, we'll crimp on a ring terminal. And basically these two ring terminals are going to uh, attach onto a, a bolt here going through the isolation transformer. So let me go and do that real quick. Okay, I've added that green wire and actually gone ahead and installed it. So uh, like I said, I crimped on a uh, male uh, 0 .8, 0 0.084 Molex pin to one end and that was plugged into the uh, three pin Molex connector. And I went ahead and did uh, click that into place so that is now uh, mounted onto the side of the enclosure and the other end of that green wire got a ring terminal crimped onto it and I've now gone and attached that here. Uh, I took my longer bolt uh, for mounting the isolation transformer. One of those uh, nuts, um, those fancy nuts with the uh, the caps nuts that have the the, the toothed washers uh, a washer attached. Uh, the first one holds the bolt in place to hold the isolation transformer secure it to the enclosure, uh, and then both ring terminals go over that bolt, and then the fifth caps uh, nut goes on top, and it kind of sandwiches those um, ring terminals in place. So we should be uh, good to go. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually um, close this enclosure. So yeah, we'll go ahead and put the lid on here, this transparent cover. And there are these like four plastic uh, screws that secure it in place. So we'll just tighten these down. And... we should be ready for final testing here. So here is our second prototype unit. It looks just like the original right here, the exact same parts put together the exact same way. And hopefully uh, it should work the exact same way. So I'm gonna go and take my IEC power cord. I'm gonna plug one end into the socket uh, at the end of the um, power supply, and I don't even know what I should really call this, right? Calling it a monitor test bench isolation transform power supply is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, I don't know if you've got a better name for it. So that's plugged in right there. In our first test, we should be able to turn the switch on and the light comes on. So that's good. Nothing's on fire, at least not immediately. I don't hear any crazy sounds. So that's, that's good. Um, and uh, but we need to make a, an adapter, a cable, an output cable to take power from the unit to the monitor. So I've actually gone ahead and uh, sort of done that. So I got uh, three lengths of wire here, black, white, and green. Uh, on one end, I crimped a uh, female uh, 0.084 Molex pins and inserted them into a male three pin plug that will mate right up with the uh, connector uh, socket um, uh, on the outside of the cabinet. So that plugs in right here. And because we're going to plug this into my little 13 inch K7000, which takes a two plug connector, the other end, the um, the, the two AC power lines coming off of the, uh, the power supply unit, the isolation transformer unit, uh, go into this male two uh, plug connector and the neutral goes to uh, the alligator clip. So I've crimped on the alligator clip here. So with this, uh, we can use our multimeter and uh, test a couple of things. So first thing I'm gonna do is test that uh, our neutral connection is good. So I will clip the alligator clip onto one of the leads. I will touch the other one, put it on continuity test and uh, touch the other one to the neutral uh, lug of the socket. 
and we've got continuity there, which is great. And then I'll plug the IEC power cord back into the socket and we will take our leads. We'll put the alligator clip sort of out of the way. We will take our leads and plug them into, we'll plug them into the, the two multimeter leads into the power output. We will set our multimeter to AC and we should see uh, something uh, around 120 volts when we turn the thing on. And there we go, 124, call it, right? Which is uh, fine. That's going to vary based on what's coming out of uh, your uh, power from the wall. So we'll turn that off. And uh, now I think we're ready to actually connect this to a monitor and uh, see if it actually works. All right, we're all plugged in and ready to go, ready to see if this newly built uh, prototype number two of this uh, monitor test bench isolation transformer power supply is ready to power a monitor. And I actually grabbed uh, the Geo 7 from the Ms. Pac Man restoration. If you remember that project, I was curious to see if uh, this thing was still working. So we've got the power coming from the unit uh, going to the uh, input, uh, the power input for the Geo 7. Uh, we've got the ground clipped onto the little ground uh, connection there on the monitor frame. Uh, we have our uh, crafty mech uh, test pattern generator connected up here uh, to the video signal input to the Geo7. I'm going to turn on the TPG. Uh, you can see the little LED light there is lit. And then we'll come over here and we'll keep our eye on both the monitor and the uh, power supply. And we'll go and turn this thing on. There we go, I heard the HV come on. And let's see if we get an image on the screen. Took a minute, but <laughs> there we go. There is our TPG image. I can step through the, um, where's the button? I'm kind of lean in here. I can step through these images. Oh, my sync is uh, a little bit off maybe. Yeah. Hmm, let me fix that real quick. All right, a minor adjustment to vertical hold on the <laughs> on the Geo7 chassis. And uh, yeah, we are cooking. Oh, the camera really makes the burn look visible with the color bars here. And uh, again, we can step through the different screens of the TPG. And uh, yeah, our, uh, <laughs> our work was successful. Uh, we've got this prototype number two of the uh, monitor test bench isolation transformer power supply. And it's past two in the morning. This took way too long, <laughs> but at least it works. So uh, I think we'll wrap it up here with this quick video. Uh, it was a short video. It took longer than I was thinking to uh, actually wrap it up. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Again, check the video description down below for links to all of the parts and tools that uh, I used in this video and that you would need to build one of these things for yourself. Um, but with that, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime!